All right, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I will be showing you how to activate and turn on developer mode on an iPhone using a Mac and also Xcode. Now, whatever I do in this video is also going to be good for the iPads as well. So basically, this particular method will work for iPhones and iPads. Now, just before I get into showing you this guide and how to, what I'm going to do is just explain a few things first. Now what it is, part of this particular how-to is the activation and by that what I mean is this, on some iPhones and some iPads you already have developer mode as a clear option within settings and all you have to do is then switch that on. However, many iPhones and iPads such as all the iPhones and iPads that I have do not even have developer mode as a listing within the settings so like I say first of all we have to activate it first to be able to switch it on however if you already have developer mode as an option then the second part as it were of this particular video will just simply show you how to switch that on but nonetheless the main thing in this video is to show how to activate developer mode on the iPhone or the iPad and obviously this is going to use a Mac computer and Xcode now the Mac computer that I'm going to be using my Itself is an M1 Max MacBook Pro. However, you can use any Mac computer. It doesn't matter, any one will do. And then all we're going to do is download Xcode, which is Apple software, which is free from the Apple App Store. And then of course, we also need to use the correct cable for connecting our iPhone or our iPad to our Mac. Now, what I'm going to be doing in this video for the demonstrating is to use an iPhone SE Gen 3. Now this particular iPhone still has the old lightning connector on it so I'm going to be using a lightning to USB-C cable to connect this phone to my Mac because my Mac uses C ports on it. Now of course if I were to be using an iPhone 15 such as this one or a Pro Max or any of the 15 series these have got USB-C on them so we would just need to use a USB-C to USB-C cable to connect and obviously the same thing with the iPads it's either going to be lightning to USB-C or USB-C to USB-C and if you're on a much older Mac that's got USB-A sockets on same thing there just make sure that the cables that you're using are the correct ones to go from your iPad or your iPhone to the Mac that you are plugging it into. Now the last thing to mention here and this is super important and that is that what we're doing here is completely legit legitimate and the reason why is because we are using an Apple Mac computer and we are also going to be using Apple software and indeed this is exactly what we have to do if we are going to be using Xcode and testing developments on either iPhones and iPads and stuff like that so like I say this is fully legitimate and what this definitely is not this is not some weird jailbreaking of your iPhone or your iPad and we are most certainly not going to be downloading some dodgy software from the internet or signing weird certificates on our iDevices from somewhere where we haven't got a clue where it all comes from anyway so with all that said let me get into this okay so what I am going to do first is to show you that this iPhone doesn't even have have developer mode on it so what I'm going to do is go to settings so go to settings there now I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here until I get to privacy and security now I'm going to tap into here now if this phone had the option for developer mode on it it should be second from the bottom so right at the bottom of the menu here second from bottom it should say developer mode and you should be able to switch it on from there however as we can see here there is no developer mode so obviously what I'm going to do now is to go through this process so that we do get the option and then we can switch it on anyway what I'm going to do here is just go back to the home screen on the iPhone so what I'm going to do now is to plug in one end of my USB to lightning cable into my Mac now what I'm going to do here is plug the lightning end into this phone whereas this one's an SE3 so this is still on lightning 
So I'm going to connect that there. Now, once this is connected, you may get an option come up on the actual phone about trusting the computer, but also we're going to get something on the computer here as well. Now, don't forget, if you have already paired your phone to your Mac, you won't get this initially anyways. But for those who haven't done this before, you might get the option on the phone and or it may actually pop up later as i will show you or you will get it pop up on your mac as we can see here so what i'm going to do it says allow accessory to connect so i'm going to click allow to allow that to happen and then on the phone now we get a message saying trust this computer so what i'm going to do is just tap trust and then I'm going to tap in my phone's pin number, so give us a moment. Okay, so at this point now, the computer and the phone are paired together and they both trust one another. Like I say, you may already have done this in the past, so you may not see these messages right now. Now, just to verify something here, I'm now going to go back to settings here. I'm just gonna scroll down once again to privacy and security. I'm gonna tap on there. And then again, I will go straight to the bottom. And as we can see here, we still don't have any developer mode option that we can switch on. Now, I've only just shown you this just so that we know that just connecting the iPhone to the Mac doesn't enable the function. So once again, what I'm gonna do here is just go back to the home screen on the iPhone. Now, the next thing to do is to install Xcode onto the Mac. Now I've already got it on mine, but what you need to do is just go to the App Store using the App Store app on your Mac. And then on the search bar here, just type in Xcode. So that's X-C-O-D-E, hit enter. And then the first thing that comes up should be Xcode. It'll definitely be within the first two things that pop up here. As you can see, this says open because I already have it. However, if you don't have it, it will have an option to get. So basically just click on get and then download Xcode. Like I said, I've already got it. So I'll just exit that. Now what I'm going to do here is go into Launchpad and then Xcode is usually probably gonna be like the last thing that gets installed at this point. However, for me, it's down here because it was already on the system, but no matter, it will definitely be with inside Launchpad somewhere. So what I'm going to do now is just tap on Xcode here. So what happens is Xcode is now launched. Now we don't need to go creating a new project or anything here, so I don't really need to look at that screen just there. But what we need to do is leave Xcode active. As you can see up here, it'll say Xcode. Now if we just run along this top menu bar here, and if we come down to where it says Window, and then what we need to do is come down to where it says Devices and Simulators. So we'll tap into there. Now at this point, what it is going to do is to connect to your iPhone that you have got connected to your Mac or indeed an iPad. It doesn't matter whether it's iPhone or iPad, it will do the exact same thing here. So as we see here, it says to use iPhone for development, enable developer mode in settings, privacy and security. Now, as we know, that option was not available on the iPhone. However, what I'm going to do now is come back to the iPhone. I'm gonna tap on settings. And what I'm going to do is just scroll down again until I get to privacy and security. I'm gonna tap on there. And then I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and look at this, we now suddenly have the option for developer mode. So basically what's happened here, because Xcode needs to talk to the iPhone or the iPad, it forces the iPhone or the iPad to now have the developer mode option. Now at this point, what we can do is to disconnect the iPhone or the iPad from the Mac, so we don't need it connected anymore. So now all we need to do is to tap on developer mode. And then when it says developer mode here, just tap the switch on there. So I've switched it on. Now it's gonna ask us to restart. So let me just restart the phone. And now that we are back on the phone, we're gonna have turn on developer mode option here. So we're gonna tap turn on. 
and then we're going to put in our pin code again for the phone now what i'm going to do is tap back on settings again now in settings we're now going to have a developer option here so if we just carry on scrolling down through the main menu on settings and what we will find here is we've got developer so if we tap on here we've now got all of the options in here that we get when we are in developer mode on the phone now i'm not going to go into what these options are because i don't know most of them there's only a couple of things in here that i've switched on developer mode for and obviously for other people there's going to be things in there that they're going to use that i won't use but nonetheless they are all of the new developer mode functions on the phone but more importantly we've now been able to switch on the options so that we can get at developer mode Okay, so there we have it then, how to activate and turn on developer mode on an iPhone or an iPad using a Mac and Apple's Xcode developer software. If you found this video useful in any way, please do give it a thumbs up and you may want to consider subscribing to this channel for other similar videos to this one. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.